influence means changing people's behaviors or beliefs. So if we understand the brains around us, that means we'll be better able to communicate information and advice to others. And there's a lot of different processes and biases that are important to understand. For example, often when we are trying to convince someone who has a different opinion or we find ourselves in argument, the worst thing we can do, and we do this often, is to say, well, look, you're wrong and I'm right, and here's all the evidence suggesting why I'm right and you're wrong. That kind of approach tends to cause the other person to see you as a disagreeing partner, and that causes them either to not listen to you anymore, or they come up with new reasons that they haven't thought about before of why you're actually wrong and they're right. And so instead of that, it is really helpful to come in from a common ground to think, okay, what is it that we actually have in common in terms of our beliefs or our motivations? If you start with the things that you actually agree on, the other person will see you as an agreeing partner. And our research shows you're much more likely to take in what I'm saying. So we have found that people are more likely to take in information that suggests positive things about the future than information that suggests negative events about the future. For example, telling a teenage kid not to smoke, so instead of saying, if you smoke, you will get cancer, you might say, if you don't smoke, you're more likely to get on the basketball team. So highlighting the action that needs to be taken in order to get to the goal, rather than frightening people with, if you do this, these horrible things will happen. It's really important to take into consideration the mental state of the person in front of us because under different mental states people process information differently so for example under stress people actually become very much hyper vigilant so if you're speaking with someone who's under stress you need to remember that any kind of negative information is what they're actually more likely to focus on which is on tendency so the optimism bias is a tendency to overestimate the likelihood of experiencing positive events and also underestimating the uh, probability of negative events. And so if our predictions tend to be a little bit more positive than the actual reality, that causes some mistakes that can be harmful. For example, we might under budget. You might take risks that you shouldn't because you're underestimating the risk. But if we are aware of it, we can then protect ourselves by putting policy in place. Look at other projects which are similar. Look at the estimations, the predictions regarding those projects. Look at what actually happened. Calculate the average bias and then add it to your own predictions.